welcome to Keysight's video series on Breaking Point. I am Stephen Duffy, Senior Systems Engineer here at Keysight. Today we're going to review how to use the DDoS Lab within Breaking Point. Breaking Point's DDoS Lab gives you the ability to validate your mitigation services against the volumetric attack. Within the lab, you get the ability to create realism through adding application profiles and DDoS attacks within the same easy to use test. This will help you troubleshoot and validate your mitigation service risk levels during ongoing assessment and maintenance periods. This lab will help you reduce the time and effort required to maintain high quality mitigation services. First, open up DDoS Labs. Click Create New, give it a name. The lab is a bit different from other points of Breaking Point as it has an interactive map to choose geographical endpoints and it also has an easy to use timeline to expedite test configurations. To create a test is quite simple. The test is broken down into three parts. The first part is the lab topology. This is the gateway for your endpoints. DDoS Labs uses a virtual router so your device under test will not have to fill its ARP tables. Since most source ports is going to be the WAN or the internet port of the test, you will need to have the gateway be pointed towards a router or firewall port that is considered public facing. The destination port is the network segment that you are protecting, so typically this is considered the internal network. Once you have set up the virtual router IP and gateway address, we can move on to the next part, the background traffic. To bring realism to your test, we won't just send a DDoS attack, also send other production-based traffic. Without the background traffic, you don't get a true view of what your system or service is capable of. Most systems can easily identify an attack if no other type of traffic is running. But on the other hand, with your traffic running, the system or service has to identify the difference in between the good, clean traffic and the DDoS flows. First, you identify the traffic profile that you want to use. You can use your own pre-made or a built-in canned profile. Next, you're going to choose your source IP address. This is where the lab helps you out. If you want a specific IP address, you can just insert it here. We use RFC 1918, so if you are using IP addresses in the range of 10 slash 8, 172.16 slash 12, 192.168 slash 16, we will ID it as a private IP address. But if you want to be creative and test out your IP filtering rules, you can use the map. It will auto load an internet routable address from that country. Click on the arrow and click on the country you want to simulate. Now since this is traffic, we're going to pick some from the US. Since it auto filled the mask and count number, you can still modify those. Just keep in mind that if you do change it, that it might modify it into a private IP address depending on if it's going against RFC 1918. Now we're going to move on to the destination side. You'll be inputting an IP address for the protected network segment. So this is where RFC 1918 comes into play. So as we pick 192.168, you will notice that it goes to US, but as soon as we change the mask into a slash 16, it converts it into a private network. Now finally for your background traffic, you're going to choose how long do you want to run the test. So you can choose anywhere from 5 seconds up to 300 hours. And then you want to choose how much throughput do you want to try to establish during this test as background traffic. This is going to be your baseline for your test to be running before the attacks start. Some of the limiters you can put on to your background traffic is maximum superflows per second and the maximum concurrent superflows. Once you configured your background traffic, we go on to the attack traffic. For the attacks, you can add in multiple attacks from different geographical location or IP ranges. Like the background traffic, you get to choose what attacks you use. All you're going to do is just click add attacks and you can add in multiple DDoS attacks that are rebuilt into Breaking Point. To edit any of the attacks, just click on it. And like background traffic, you get to choose your source and your destination. Remember, for the destination, you're most likely going to be choosing a private IP address. After that, you get to choose per attack how long do you want to wait until you initiate the attack. And then you choose how long do you want the attack to occur. 
For the attack objective, you get to choose. Are you more focused on the throughput or flows per second? This is going to change depending on what type of attack you're trying to simulate. If you click on more, it allows you to limit the attacks by super flow rate and concurrent super flows. Now since we have two different attacks, we need to go in and modify the second one as well. At this point, it is ready to be saved. And now you can run. As the test starts, you will see the nice clean traffic. Now as the attacks start, you'll actually see the simulation. Since I do not have a DDoS mitigation in place, it is expected that all of them get through. But for your type of testing, you'll most likely see success rates lower than 100%. Now as the DDoS is attacking the other side, you'll notice that you're going to start getting timeouts due to the DDoS attacking the network causing issues within the application. Now as the DDoS attack stops, the traffic starts resuming successfully. If you're interested in additional information, please reach out to jointhejourney at keysight.com.